Okay, this video will teach you how to run a scan. I will show you why I use a scan and what I need to use it for. So this structure is kind of a strange one in that I was aiming to find a, a starting point uh, to calculate this structure here. I have this structure already calculated as a minimum uh, and I tried to scan by pushing sulfur towards nitrogen. I wanted to try to find a point on the surface that had a imaginary frequency corresponding something to this as a transition state to kind of start my transition state search from. But this scan didn't work very well. So one thing that you can do is try to go in reverse. So in this case, I'm imagining that sulfur is already on nitrogen and I'm going to push it back towards copper and see where this transfer happens. It's kind of like a one-two shift. So I need to see uh, kind of a maximal point uh, to start my transition state search from. What's kind of funny about this current case is that uh, two things really. One, uh, you would expect this bond to be cleaved, but this bond is apparently here, uh, intact, and this structure is a minimum. So at least in this method, uh, this combination of, of DFT uh, exchange correlation functional, basis set, and solvation model, this seems to be a minimum. The other kind of funky thing about this is that uh, this copper isn't bound uh, to both oxygens. It's kind of uh, bound only to this one oxygen and this other way is hanging out here. I know from, or I suspect anyway, from other calculations that as I stretch this bond here, this oxygen bond will probably start to form. So I'm actually going to set up two scans here, but uh, you can see uh, the use of scans in two different ways here. Okay, so we'll we'll set up two scans here. So my starting point is actually going to be this geometry here. So I'm going to set up a new template, um, well, two new templates based on this geometry. So one thing you can do is you can go up in ChemCraft, and if you have a frequency calculation that's a minimum, you can click Source, and it will take you to this section here, which is the um, the geometry section, the optimized geometry. So I copy all this section here and I use my uh, chopper template. There's a tab here called blank format. I just delete everything in here, paste everything in. Um, it may be the case that you have to set up your, your blank format here because uh, notice that this has all these other things here, right? So it has like commas in between. So what you can do is you can go into one column, click text to columns, click delimited and then now you can say uh, specify which things are delimiting your data so in this case we have commas right so I wanna make sure that I use commas here and I'm gonna add spaces here and you click next and finish and that will separate your data out like this into each different tab so I delete this one I don't need that one but I do need this data here so this is gonna be my my starting point for my calculation so the next thing is I set up my um, template here that I'm going to use to run the calculation. Right, so I I just go to some sort of uh, some sort of thing that I've been using in my project before. Doesn't really matter what you use. We use this guy. I just open one that I already have kind of set up here. So in this case, I paste in my geometry and make sure that my template is set up all how I want it to be. So I'm going to make a new name for this. This guy is going to be, we'll call it uh, um, TSX uh, TS scan, right? Because we're trying to scan for the transition state. So we'll call it TSX, which is what I'm naming this guy right here. See, I kind of have a funny name for it here, TSX. And then something to help me remember what it is. But I'll also write down details of, of what I'm doing on the actual calculation. So we'll call this... TSX, and we'll call it TS Scan. So I change the title in this section, and I also change the name of my checkpoint file up here. So that's all set up there. Okay, so then we have to look at the rest of our stuff here. Uh, we do need to use our split basis set in this project. So you see I'm using this gen right here, and I define my basis set info down here. Uh, one error you can run into is maybe you don't specify the correct atoms. So let's make sure that we have all those atoms in here. So it looks like we have oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, and sulfur. 
oxygen, sulfur, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. So basically everything. So let's see here. Carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, sulfur. Okay, so those are all going to be defined appropriately. We're using LNL2DZ for copper and a pseudopotential for copper. So that's good. So we're reading our super pseudopotential. We're using D3 empirical dispersion here. We're doing it without symmetry with an ultrafine grid. And we need to remove this frequency because in a scan, we don't care about an actual minimum. So we can delete that out of there. You're going to run it in a solvation model. So that's all good here. So now we're going to show how to do an inputs, right? So I'm going to copy this twice because I'm actually going to do two scans. So I'll call this second one scan two. Okay, so now we're all set up here. So to do a scan, the first thing you need to do is expand this optimization thing with this keyword mod redone. And we're going to set tight uh, uh, constraints here because uh, I want to have kind of good data here on my scan. So we set up the same thing on this guy. We could have copied and pasted this later. But now we have to think about what scans we want. Okay, so when you do a scan, you're going to put it, that scan data. Basically, the rule is that it always goes immediately after the geometry. No matter what else you're doing down here, if you're doing different um, things, you're always going to put it right here, right, Un underneath the geometry. But you have to make sure you're going to skip a line. Otherwise, the input won't be read appropriately. So we skip a line, and we leave a line afterwards. So now let's set up our first scan. So our first scan, um, we want to know if, uh, like, basically how well bound is this um, uh, ligand here, right? So we're going to we're gonna cleave this bond, basically. So I'm going to start my scan from this intermediate point. And what I'm hoping to see here is I'm hoping to see maybe like a barrierless cleavage here, and then this guy reforming into um, the C5 that we already have, right? So I want that other oxygen bond to form, and I want this nitrogen bond to cleave. So the way I'm going to kind of probe that is I'm going to scan this bond. So we want to stretch this one and see how the energy changes. So I can see here in ChemCraft, once I click on both these things and I'm going to click, that lets me see the numbers. Maybe if you prefer, you could also go up here and say um, labels on atoms, and you could put sequential number, right? So you could also always have this on if that's your preference, right? You can do it that way if you want. So I know that my index here is 1 and 16. Those are the two atoms. So I'm going to say bond 116. That's defining the bond that I'm interested in. I'm going to say S for stretch. Let's say we're going to do 25. It doesn't really matter. Most of the time, you're never going to hit that upper limit. You just need to specify some number, uh, maximal number of steps for your calculation. So we're going to use 25. That should easily be enough. And we're going to scan by 0 0.1 angstrom. And let's say even if you, this number here always has to be a, um, like a real number, so you always have to have a decimal in here. So even if you were to scan, sometimes you want to scan around a dihedral, right? So in that case, you're going by degrees. So let's say you're doing 30 degrees each time. You need to make sure to put a 0, .0 otherwise your calculation won't uh, complete. So it, it's expecting this decimal number. So in this case, we're going by 0 0.1 angstrom. So we'll do that, and that's all that we need to do for the scan. So that's this one set up, so let's set up the second one. We kind of see. So in this case, let's set up this one for a, a hopeful transition state. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if I can figure out where the transition state is, um, like pushing this uh, sulfur towards this copper. So what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to shrink this distance. So right here, we see we're starting out at 3.3 .3 angstrom. So I'm going to effectively pull this sulfur towards this copper and at each step the rest of the structure can minimize right so this isn't going to go like in a straight line right and just it's going to kind of like push over how you would expect right and then at some point it should transfer over onto this copper so all we're going to do in this case is we're going to basically do like a we did a push before now we're going to do a pull so we're going to do the same thing atom index is 119 so we're going to go here Make sure we have a space before and after. Do a bond, 119, 25 steps. In this case, since we're shrinking, we're going to use a minus. So now we're going to shrink by minus 0.1 angstrom. And now we're all set up for this one. Okay, so now we'll put our calculations in. So I have my inputs all set up. So this one's called TSX TS scan. So I'm going to go to my terminal. 
here's my terminal and I'm in the space that I want to do it. This is the project that I'm doing. So I'm going to type VI uh, TSX TS scan. And this is my input file. So I'm going to do dot com. Now I'm in this uh, VI editor. I'm going to press I to go into insert mode. And I'm just going to paste my template in here. Apparently it didn't save. So we'll make sure that we have it saved and paste. And make sure that you always have at least one space at the end of this guy. It's very important, otherwise your calculation will end. Now we save this by typing colon, WQ, we're exiting with saving. And that one's all set up. So now we go to the second one, and we do the same thing. We paste our second one in here. This is TSX scan 2. Put that guy in here. Go back. So I get out of uh, insert mode by pressing escape. And I go WQ. So now we have both our input set up. So let's make our um, submission data. So I make another file without .com. And now insert mode. I always leave my file here open, right? So I go over here to my Gaussian submission script. Scans, I need a long time. And I want to do like one and done because you can't really restart them in an easy way. So I put it in nine hours. I'm going to run it on this first allocation here, mechanistic studies, and I copy this, I paste this, save this, make number two, save it. Okay, now we're all set up. So now I say S batch, my first one, press enter, you'll see it go through, right? And I always keep track of this number in my notebook, submit the second one. So now in my notebook, I, I write myself notes, right? So I write myself down the name of the jobs that I'm putting in, TSX, TS scan, And I write down the number in case I need to check the air file. So 655117 for the first one. And 6555118 for the second one. And I write myself notes, right? So I say which bonds I'm stretching and why I'm doing it because maybe this is going to take like two days, right? So I come back and uh, I can look at the output whenever it actually does run if I'm running a, a ton of jobs and it's late in the queue, right? So I always write this stuff down so that I can monitor and then uh, I can press Q in our case, right? We have this script just to make sure that it's in there and there aren't any errors for whatever reason. So I see that my uh, scans are all set up. So that's how we do it. And then uh, we'll check back in later to kind of see the output of this and, and what we're going to get, right? But that's how you set up a scan in two ways, and it's pretty easy. Um, this is like one of the really useful tools to try to figure out what's going on in difficult cases, right? So I'm basically Sherlock Holmesing the structure and trying to figure out any info it wants to tell me. So that's it.